Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. I'm always excited but today I'm excited because my quarterly box from Artful has just landed and I am particularly excited for reasons that shall be revealed as we look at this second quarterly box from Oh Dear and see what is inside. So we're going to go to top down view, get that box open up and see what kind of goodies are inside. Let's get going. Okay, so this is super exciting for me because the lovely people at Artful, namely one Mr. Jamie Mitchell, who is the creative director, got in touch with me after my review to let me know that he's been reading all of your comments under the, the last review that we did and that he's taken some of it on board. So I've had a little bit of dialogue with Jamie and I've also given him my thoughts and suggestions based on that last book, just kind of expanding on what I said in my review. So I'm really interested to see if anything has changed and what is different about this box. One of the main topics of conversation was about the magazine and uh, I gave him my personal thoughts. The thing that excites me most is that I seem to have found some like-minded people. Most of you are aware that I ask for feedback from you on a regular basis and I always strive to improve and find that balance between what I like to do and what you guys want to see and I really get the impression the guys at Artful are in the same position and they want to make their box as good as possible and give everybody a little bit of what they would like. So I'm really curious to see what's changed. So everything's all wrapped up here. Um, hmm, let's see what's in the goodies. So bearing in mind this is a quarterly box so you're only getting one of these every three months. <laughs> here is our bear. Okay. Oh, and we have a oh, we have a bear outline as well. Oh, okay, I see where this is going. This is kind of like the let's make art box because it says down at the bottom here tutorial. Oh, there's a tutorial in the magazine. So this is a very faint pencil line of our bear here. Oh, this is exciting. So let's see what else we've got. We've got a Faber Castell sketch pad. Oh, that's fancy. Uh, A5, 40 sheets of 40 sheets of paper and it's 160 GSM. So this would not be much good for wet media, but as a sketch pad, it should take pencil and all these other things reasonably well. Oh, it's got a little bit of texture to it, my favourite. Okay, that is a really solid pad of paper. I like to use the Faber-Castell mixed media paper. I haven't tried any of the other papers, so I'm quite curious. Uh, it says here, ideal for graphite coloured and watercolour pencil. I would be wary of using watercolour pencils on paper this thin, but we'll certainly give that a bash and find out. Oh, we've got a little set of note cards as well. So these are blank note cards. And they say artful on the back as well, lovely. And they're one, two, three, four, five, six little cards with envelopes as well. So you can get creative till your little heart's content with those. That's awesome. And then we've got our little funky envelope that I quite like that has our supplies in it. So I'm hoping we're going to have things in, oh I see pencils, oh goody 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 Ellie, oh, 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 okay, hey. now this is, oh my goodness, look at this, <laughs> oh there's something else kicking about in here as well, okay, 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 right, I think we're done, no we're not done. So the first thing I'm noticing about this box is that if you remember last time, if you cast your mind back, the last box was almost exclusively Tombow supplies and this time it's Faber-Castell because if I just show you this, we have a, a set of drawing pencils and uh, these are the 9000 range pencils which I use quite a lot actually and they've given us a range of grades so we've got an HB, a B, a 2B and a 4B so that is like perfect sketching grade pencils. These are really good quality pencils. Um, they're not too precious though that you're gonna not want to use them. So we'll go through that in a bit more detail once we've had a look at everything else. We've got this massive chunky <laughs> blending stump. Uh, I have loads of these as well. Now these are great for blending and smudging out and you can keep these to a point by using a little sanding block. I've got one somewhere kicking about. I'll dig it out and I can show you that as well. 
They've also given us two coloured pencils and they are the Polychromos coloured pencils which are the, the, the premium pencils shall we say. So we have got cobalt blue greenish and we've also got white as well. They are oil based pencils, they are great for layering and the core on them is, a, I would say it's a medium to firm yeah, medium to firm core that these have. So they take a little bit more work to blend out compared to something like Prismacolor, but they do last a lot longer and they hold a point much better as well. They're pretty light fast as well, so they're very reliable in terms of what they're put out there for. And Polychromos are actually my favourite coloured pencils. They're the ones that I use most often. We've got a Faber-Castell mechanical pencil, propelling pencil as I call it. It does have a hexagonal barrel grip, but the actual barrel itself is round and it's 0 0.5 and it says TK fine and it does have some lead in it. I was going to pull this off and see if it's got an eraser in it but I don't think it does. We've got a Faber-Castell latex free pencil eraser as well so this is just your kind of standard, standard eraser. I'll zoom in a little bit more, you can see that a bit better. Uh, these are generally quite good as well. We also have a pencil sharpener and this looks like a non-branded commoner garden. It does have a German blade in it and that's usually a, a good sign, that's a sign of quality. So we have got basically a full sketching kit here which is really nice. Ooh. So I'll just bring everything in. That's quite a lot of supplies actually. Oh, this is like, this like, this box was made for me. <laughs> oh, goodness me. So that's it. I mean, you have got everything you need to get yourself started sketching. So if you want to get yourself into drawing, this would be an ideal box for a, a first timer or a novice artist. So let's have a look at the magazine. I do like the fact that all the supplies have come from the same brand. That just kind of invokes that lovely completionist feeling in, in me that I like, like that sense of order. So I'm really curious to see what's going on in here now and see if anything that Jamie and I have talked about has uh, come to fruition. So there's a little bit here about artful and what they do. And uh, okay, we've got some new information here. We want to extend your artful experience for the whole quarter to keep you busy before receiving your next box. How? We host a daily drawing challenge which you can take part in on our Instagram. Each day sees a different prompt and if you tag us, we share a selection of the submitted work in our stories. Now that's cool. That's what I'm talking about. Because you're special to us, subscribers will receive an email once a month with a new video tutorial detailing a new activity for you to try with your selection of materials. Okay, this is one of the things that I uh, that I mentioned and that, that Jamie and I discussed was this... Uh, the Skillshare thing, I find that really off-putting. For anyone that is not a new artist, they have either had a, a Skillshare subscription or currently have one. So that really didn't add any value to the box. But the fact that if you are a newer artist, that they're going to they're going to give you a video tutorial and they're going to send it to you, that's that's much much better. As time goes on, we'll layer up your experience with the box. Our intention is to build a buzzing creative community which you can't help but feel inspired by. This is only box two but we've listened closely to feedback guys that's us <laughs> to ensure that we make each box better than the last we want you to get as much as from as much from the experience as possible that's excellent so here is something else that quite a lot of you talked about as well we have technical information on the supplies in the box i'm curious about this mechanical pencil tk fine mechanical pencil which is a 0.5 millimeter lead uh refills are available in 2b up to 3H, so it's quite limited, but I would expect that you don't want really soft lead in a propelling pencil because it just snaps. The 0.5 millimeter lead included with this mechanical pencil is highly versatile, suitable for both writing and drawing. Now, they don't tell you what grade is in the pencil to start with. Oh, it does have an eraser on the end of it. I'm looking at the picture. Mine's just stiff. Maybe you twist it off. Nope. Um, I don't know how to do this. Oh, there we go. It was just stiff. Okay, so we do have an eraser. Yay. Better. I was just being a pansy about it. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know what grade of lead is in this. I would take a guess and say that it's HB. 
and it is a Faber Castell sharpener so it's just a simple sharpener. It's suitable for both graphite and coloured pencils. If you do use a sharpener for coloured pencils regularly it's really good to run a graphite pencil through it every now and then and that just helps the, stop the wax build up on the blade and keeps it nice and sharp and stops it dulling your pencils. Okay so that's good that it's a Faber Castell one so it doesn't actually see it on it anywhere but okay. The blender pencil, oh this is the blending stump, blending stump. Uh, yeah, yeah. Blender pencils can move around the graphite strokes, blending or softening edges. The cores are pigment free and wax based, enabling enabling you to create the perfect texture in your drawing without affecting its colour. Um, I think we've got our information mixed up here. This isn't a blender pencil, this is a blending stump, it doesn't have a core. I think that's been a mistake. So this is just basically made from paper stroke cardboard that's condensed and um, you, people, you, people use them for a lot of things. You can dip this in odourless mineral spirit or a blending medium to blend out your pencil, your colour pencil, and some people just use them dry to smudge. I do that sometimes depending on what other mediums I'm working with. We shall give you a demonstration just shortly. The Polychromos pencils, available in 120 colours. The Polychromos pencils lay down soft, vibrant colours that are both water resistant and smudge proof. The greetings cards, that's these little guys here. They are, uh, oh that's good, these are 280 GSM so you can fire some water on those and they'll be great. Suitable for dry and wet media and it says page 32 for inspiration. Okay good, 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 good. The sketch pad, um, well we've kind of talked about that. This lightweight material can take pen as well as pencils. Yeah I'll be really curious and I'm going to try some water based media on it just to see if it does what it says on the tin. DIY Jack print. Recreate Jack the Beer. <laughs> Jack the Beer. His name's Jack. Where is he? Jack, where are you? Jack's here. Here he is. <laughs> uh, Jack the Bear from a rough outline with your new tools. Page 40 for more. Yeah, I, I like Jack the Bear. He, he looks suitably cheesed off. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got tips on the basics of drawing. T uh, t test each of your instruments with different line making. Oh, well, isn't that funny? That ties in really nicely with the first video I did on uh, drawing tips for beginners series. If you haven't seen that, I will link it in the end card for you. I'll also link it down in the description if you want to watch it right now. Don't look at the drawing. <laughs> I see this all the time as well. Shading isn't always... Oh yeah, there's loads of stuff here. This is amazing for new artists. This is really helpful and I would strongly suggest that you read this if you are a new artist. Ooh. To demonstrate the difference between the graphite options you have available, available, Jamie drew the same shell five times. Well, isn't Jamie a talented such and such? Oh, this is this magazine's much better. So we've got a proper contents page. So the first part of that is now essentially an introduction to your supplies, and that is very very detailed. the The interview is with Jamie uh, Jamie Mitchell himself, and he is the co-founder and creative director of Oh Dear and in brackets Artful. So that you can have a little uh, look at what he's got to say for himself a little chat that's all good oh, oh i do love a dog who draw drawing faces that i need to read this bit because i just don't i just don't draw faces if anybody have if any of you have seen my last uh, scroller challenge video you will know that i have to i should really pay some attention to some of this but this is really detailed step by step so they're talking a little bit about oh dear which is the parent company of artful and they're telling you a bit about what they do and they make greetings cards. And here's our bit on Jack the Bear as well. Oh, this is fabulous. So you can do your own Jack the Bear from the outline or you can draw your own outline. And we have another artist interview here. Oh, look at that, that's stunning. All the zebras, all the zebras. A tutorial on owls, butterflies. So they have artists. Oh, this is just good. I like this bit as well. I really enjoyed this in last month's magazine. And this is the part where they they just have a little snippet of some artists to give you some inspiration if you want to go and find them on Instagram. And uh, I think that's that's a really nice thing to do because it's a quick thing you can do. It's not too in-depth. Hello, Ben Sharman. Your, your art is just for me. I'm coming to see you on Instagram. <laughs> Another artist. Oh, they've really, really taken their time to think this out. This is this is much better, much, much better. I feel as if there's a lot more relevant quality content to help you in your arting journey as well as just having something to read and, you know, like foster that art community feeling. I felt as if the last magazine was mostly adverts and, hey, look at this artist. Whereas this is this is feels much more rounded and much more like a, a very full 
quarterly subscription box because this is just jam-packed to the rafters with different artists and things you can do and look there's so much inspiration in the artwork as well so there's lots to read there lots to read one advert so far oh and this is a person that creates sculptures on the end of pencil tips i've seen this before and it's crazy but it's awesome this is the end of a pencil that is very inspiring delicious desk spaces i like looking at stuff like this as well i'm always curious as to how other people have their desks set up how films little brother became the top dog so that there's this film section again which uh, yeah okay mm -hmm. again this was already this was already finalized before uh, i got into a conversation with the guys at artful so i knew this would be in here but this may not be a, an ongoing feature i felt it was a little bit pointless in its current format Mm, but you know that's down to interpretation well i am much 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 happier with this as a magazine like way happier there's so much in there and what i really my main complaint from the last one was that there is it was basically here's some art supplies in a magazine see in three months whereas now i feel that it's a bit more Here's a really nice curated set of art supplies. Here's how to use them. And here's some inspiration if you know how to use them and you want to go and do your own thing. That's how I feel about this box. And there is so much in this. Between Jack the Bear and the, the greetings cards and the daily drawing challenge and the tutorials that are actually in the magazine. That is, that is the beans. I am super, super happy with this. Now it's time to get down to brass tacks and do what I do best. We are going to test the yeehaw out of these Faber-Castell supplies and see what they can and cannot do. So I'm just going to get cleared up a bit here and we can get down to business. It's the next day and I've had a little bit of time to digest the plethora of information that has come in this box. And uh, the thing that's been plaguing me is uh, our friend Jack here. We have an outline for Jack which is lovely along with the tutorial in the magazine i think that jack needs a girlfriend he's clearly very unhappy by the expression on his face and i was thinking maybe as a second video and just to display these supplies a bit more maybe we could have a bash at uh, giving jack a companion if you have any thoughts on that or you'd like to see me do that please let me know down below in the comments and i will be happy to make a video on that and if you don't want to see it i might just do it anyway just for funsies and put it on instagram or something so we're gonna um have a little try out of some of these supplies so i'm going to try on one of the greetings cards as well as the paper that has come in the box the faber castell sketch pad and in the interest of keeping everything samey i have got my rather dusty uh, faber castell pit pastel pencils and i also have my uh, faber castell watercolor pencils my albrecht durers so we're going to put that on because i did say i wanted to test the, the how well this sketch paper takes wet media now the last thing that i've got is some actual pastels as well and that's more just out of curiosity say than anything and uh, it really is turning into the faber castell appreciation society here but you know it might as well why not so what we have in the box first of all is uh, these polychromos pencils these are the artist grade pencils and i love them very much i use them all the time there is a little bit of texture on this paper which is going to be really nice for building up layers and that's what these pencils do best in my opinion but you can see there and uh, i'm i have lost count of my layers already but that's at least four i think that might be five i'm starting to get to saturation point but you can build up some really deep rich color there like so I tend not to use the white pencils very often. Some people use them as sort of like a blender pencil um, uh, You when you get to the burnishing stage as well. So if you do put that down over the top, it will lighten up what you've got. As I say, these pencils are really, really good for layering. So you can see there it's given me a bit more of a blended appearance but it's also lightening up the colour of that cobalt blue as well but you can get some really nice effects with that as well so this seems to take the pencil really nicely which is what we like and while we're talking about these coloured pencils I was just going to give you a quick demonstration with the the blending stump now you can use it straight onto the onto the pencil if I just give you another quick scribble here you'll see what I mean and uh, you can press down and it will squish out 
that's the that is the technical term you know it will squish out what you've put down and you can just use it to soften edges or to blend colors together now eventually this does start to get a bit grubby and also if you're using it on colored pencil it will leave pigment on the tip this is just one of the little sanding boards I was talking about these are relatively inexpensive I did have a faber castell one but it's long gone the, the easiest way I find to do this um, coming from a background many many moons ago I qualified as a chef and I liken it to sharpen a knife on a steel if you push away from yourself onto the sandpaper but rotate the stump as you go and keep it at not quite a 45 degree angle from the sanding paper then what that does is help you keep the point and it just takes off the grubbiness off the end and that just gives you a, a nice uh, pointy pointy point for want of a better phrase ah yeah so the other thing i've got here is some uh, pencil blending fluid this is zest it which is just a popular brand in the uk there are many other available and i know that gamsol is quite popular in the states you can use your blending stump with this you do have to be careful with this stuff it's not particularly um nose friendly the zest it's okay Okay, it smells of oranges but I still don't think it's all that good for you so if you just soak the tip in your your blending medium like this and uh, you can apply it you ideally you want to use it on a couple of layers of pencil not just a single layer but if you use your blending stump in little circular motions you can see there that that is smoothing out the pencil over the texture of the paper now this is preferable for a lot of people to using a normal blending pencil or just using the stump on its own because it lets you add more pencil on top of it because you're not damaging the tooth of the paper. When you when you press down hard with a blending stump or a normal blending pencil, you're squashing the tooth of the paper flat. If you use a blending medium like this, if you use a light hand, it doesn't damage the texture of the paper and it means you can go back in and darken things down, but you do have to let it dry. It, sometimes it ghosts or soaks through and you can see on this paper, you can just see a tiny hint of it, but not much at all also your blending solution will just dry on the end of your stump that's absolutely fine so again leave that to dry before you sand it off if that's what you want to do so we've got this uh, mechanical pencil which uh, i think is an hb but we'll we will we'll see we'll soon find out and the great thing about mechanical pencils is because they've got a very fine tip you don't need to sharpen them obviously but you get quite a consistent line with them whereas sometimes with a normal pencil you it depends on the sharpener and how much of a point it's got on it but this is pretty consistent really easy to use the i always think that mechanical pencils feel slightly scratchy but i i think that's just a you know like a characteristic of the mechanical pencil not a specific mechanical pencil so i want to grab the hb in the traditional pencil and i just want to put this down side by side and uh, i i do actually think that that lead is an hb just when i see it next to you know this pencil they look quite similar so yeah hb hard black common or garden pencil kids usually use them at school nice midway point in your pencil grades and you can get a little bit of uh, you know of a darker shade with them but they're still i call them the all-rounder pencil because you can do a bit of shading with them but they're hard enough that you can still draw those you know those construction lines if that's what you want so we'll test our eraser here as well this is the the latex free eraser and i don't have to press too hard for it to take that graphite away it's not too smudgy so I would say that's a, a fairly fairly decent standard eraser to have in your repertoire. Now if we look at the other drawing pencils, this is where things get interesting. So these are at the, the, the sort of darker, softer end of the scale. If you go in the other direction towards the H end, that becomes, uh, you know, very hard and very fine pencils. So for sketching generally, we want to sort of get in some shading and smoosh stuff about. And uh, these head up the way. So from our HB pencil, we then go to a B pencil i i don't often use a b pencil to be honest it is only slightly softer than an hb but when you are doing like maybe just rough sketches in your sketchbook or thumbnailing and stuff this is a good pencil to use to get an idea of like where you want your shading to be without actually going into full-blown shading if you're working on a, a on a page that you don't want to smear quite as much a b pencil is the sort of like tame equivalent <laughs> moving on up then if i show you the 2b pencil you can see it's darker 
and it's a bit richer as well. So you can see the difference between the two there and then the 4B which is one of my preferred pencils. This, I use for this for like my mid-tone shading and it's softer again so it's filling up more of the texture of the paper and you can get a slightly richer tone again and this goes down really easily. The softer the pencil is the less pressure you have to put on it to actually get the graphite to go down on the paper. The smudginess factor is a thing as well so I'm going to use the other end of my blending stump here and I'm going to start with the HB and if I just pull this out to show you what happens this is where you really start to see the characteristics of the different grades of graphite because you can see there that with the 2B there's, it's much darker and smudgier when it pulls out and you can take it that little bit further than you can with the, the HB and then if I come down into the 4B oh my goodness you can go to town you can <laughs> now obviously that has its advantages for when you're actually sketching something but when it comes to practicalities like hands and if you're anything like me I'm not putting any pressure on that and you can see how much it's like squishing itself all over the paper I'll use another finger 2B pretty much the same thing just not quite as bad and then if we go to the HB that's much much more limited just because of the grade of the pencil <laughs> there you go yeah here's here's a, a Sattler 8B pencil it's you're like you're bordering onto like charcoal <laughs> or like like a black coloured pencil you can see the difference there though that it's absolutely you know it is, it's really really dark so there you go that's a little overview of the pencils I did want to test the eraser on the end of the mechanical pencil as well, just to see. We'll use it on the actual. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to try the darker ones. Oh, I quite like this eraser. Normally on the ends of these pencils, they're just not, not that exciting, but that's pretty good. I did mash quite hard in the paper there, so I'm not surprised that's not taken up. So that's really handy if you don't want to carry an eraser about with you, you know, if you're maybe if you're out and about, that kind of thing. Right, let's have a quick go with uh, all of the other million Faber-Castell supplies I've got because I think we've established that this paper will take pencil no problem. So this uh, this little set of pastels, I picked these up second hand and I bought these way, way back at the beginning of my art journey and they're the little dinky ones and there's quite a lot in there. I don't even know if you can still get these. Uh, if you can, I will try and find a, a link to them, maybe like on Amazon or something. I can stick it down in the description for you. That was probably the wrong colour to pick because you can't see that very well. Let's try purple, that would probably be better. Okay, so that's just very lightly and you can see how much that's uh, coming through. But if I take my blending stump again, and I'm just very lightly going to blend that out a wee bit. Mm, it's not great. So I'm going to go back over it again. Oh no, it's taking it. It is taking it. Yeah, when I'm blending it, it is just lifting most of it back off. So... <laughs> I think you would be okay with a little bit of pastel. I don't think these uh, block pastels would be would be the best idea, really. But I mean, the paper's not designed for that. But it will take a, a smidgen, which is nice to know. So then we've got the uh, the the pastel pencils, which are a little bit more refined. Uh, let's see, we've got a kind of turquoisey colour here. Okay, and that's taking that like a boss. Now it'll be interesting to see if we try and blend that out with our blending stump. Now this isn't really something I would do in a sketchbook. I'm really just. Uh, Okay, that's not blending or smearing at all. Yeah, I, I'm just playing what if here. I'm not suggesting that this should be used in there. So really, if you were adding accents or highlights and things, you could use your pastel pencils on this paper. It's not going to tell you to go away and it's not going to be horrible to you. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend, again, doing like a full piece with them. Okay, now, now, now let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get the watercolour pencils out. So as I say, these are the Albrecht Dürer pencils. And they come in exactly the same colours as the Polychromos. They're just the watercolour version. So that's really handy if you're used to polychromos pencils and you decide you want some watercolour pencils, you already know your colours, which is something personally that I, I love because I'm strange like that. These do behave very much like a normal coloured pencil and that's one of the reasons I really like them as watercolour pencils. So I'm just going to stick a couple of layers down here. And I'm going to grab a little water brush here. This is a Milan water brush. It came in a scrawler box. I happen to quite like it. Let's just see. Oh, now that's... Um, it's distributing quite well across the paper, like the, the paper is behaving itself, shall we say. And it's letting me pull out a little bit. Oh, it's letting me pull out a lot. Okay, I'm impressed. But the thing is, we want to know about buckling. So just down this edge here where you know, this is like the, the loose edge of the pad, I am going to 
pretend that I'm being really creative and get a masterpiece on the go. <laughs> and I'm going to put a fair amount of water down here because I want to know what happens. Now it is starting to buckle slightly but that is not unusual nor is it a particularly bad thing. All paper will buckle slightly if you put water on it. It's the extent of the buckling that we need to worry about. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to the side. If I turn this up on its end very slightly, you can see it is starting to buckle a little bit, but I'm going to leave it to dry and see what happens. So the other thing is we've got these uh, greetings cards and I just really quickly want to... The paper feels interesting. <laughs> uh, I just want to see how we get on with some of these supplies on here. So this is the 2B pencil. This, These don't like pencil as much as the sketching paper. Now that might sound like a perfectly logical statement, but I don't think you'd want to be doing graphite drawings on, on these. They just don't. The, the pencil looks very, very shiny on it as if it's not really... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, it's just as if it's not taking the pencil very well. So here's the 4B, that's the darkest one. Yeah, I'm not really... No, I'm not not, not recommending that. Let's try some coloured pencil. Oh, coloured pencil is much better. Again, not really... not great, but not terrible. Okay, we can get a bit of layering in, that's fine. And again, I just want to try some watercolour pencil on here too, because I think it would be much more suited to that just because of the thickness of the paper, like the weight of the paper. Yes, it is behaving more like, like watercolour paper. Not entirely, but more so than the sketch pad. Okay, if we just jump back over here to this sketch paper, uh, this is, there, there is buckling. So you can see there that that's happened. It's not horrendous, it's not terrible. I've managed to get quite a nice smooth gradient here as well with the water brush. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give that one to Faber Castell and say yeah, although it is only 160 GSM paper, uh, it's fine for watercolour pencils. It's pretty good. There you have it everyone. That is the tester run for these supplies in this quarters artful box. I keep trying to remember to say quarter and not month because I'm so used to saying month. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this box and also I'm sure the guys at Artful would as well because they are listening so if you have an opinion on something please do not be frightened to share it in the comments. As far as I know at this point in time they are still only shipping to the UK. I think they're looking at changing that. I, I'll confirm that for you and I'll update it and put it down in the description if there's any change to the, the shipping zones as it were. In terms of the tutorials and the projects, I am super impressed with this box and I would like to have a go um, at some of them with the supplies that have come in the box. So if that is something you'd like to see, I'm still in favour of Jack getting a girlfriend, um, please feel free to let me know and we can definitely have a crack at that. So all that remains is for me to thank you very much for watching. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate it, especially if you've stuck this out to the end because it's quite a long video and we shall see See you back in the cave as normal on Thursday for our regular scheduled video. Have a great day everyone, stay safe and bye for now.